Phillips, and he may be another right-hander out there competing in the semifinals. And Scott Devers now has just cut Billy Hall's lead to two pens and a very impressive shot. John, are you uh, going to compete next week in Edmond, Oklahoma? Oh, yes, and the Quality Inns International. I'm looking forward to it. Great, uh, great stop on a summer tour for us. $200,000 total. Three bagger for Scott Deaver, who had strung four in his first victory. 236 to Jess Day Rooks, 179. Well, for the statistic buffs, the man who has been leading after five frames this year has won 77% of the matches. So right now, Billy Hall was that man leading after five frames, but with that double by Scott, Hall has fell in arrears by two. Oh, a very important strike for the right-hander. Doubling, fifth and sixth, now with that two-pin lead and moving over to the left side to hopefully increase it to 12. After us, ABC's Wide World of Sports champ Gianfranco Rossi meets schoolboy Darren Van Horn in the IBF Junior middleweight title fight. Plus, and get this, for the first time in this year's Tour de France, American Greg LeMond has dramatically taken over the league. Greg now wearing the traditional leader's yellow jersey. So that'll be a part of Wide World today. And uh, a turf race from Atlantic City, Caesars International Handicap. Chris, and I'll give you the winners of that race, or the my... Pr predictions in a little bit, but right now Billy Hall has run into big trouble here in the seventh frame when he could have taken a 12 pin lead. He kind of goes over the top of the ball and he has the 4, 7, 6, 7, and all he can do is shoot for the 4, 7, get the best count he can because he doesn't want to throw away pins on a double and stay close in the match. So I set back momentarily for Billy Hall of Marion, Ohio. We're going to take this break and then return. That's right. Wide World next, and next to Bowl here at Bowl of El Paso is Scott Devers, who won the first game. Right now, he has three in a row shooting in the seventh. And I can't wait for Bo's pick in the Caesars International Turf Race from Atlantic City coming up on Wide World. All right, six pin. Well, it's an easy spare for Devers here, and he can maintain a 12 pin lead in the match, Chris. Now, as Devers quickly up with another ball and you know Johnny Petraglia even with his accuracy he still goes to a low a, a higher surface friction ball for spares Sometimes, uh, especially if the track is drying out on the right you want to use a ball that'll get through the heads to get across the lane at the seven pin it was not the six pin maybe it's the sixth number six horse in the field that's going to win in Atlantic City well you're pretty close Chris it's a okay. six to one shot and it's mark of distinction and uh, he's not the favorite the favorite is Steinlin going off at eight to five and I'll tell you why mark of distinction so good he's bred to go the long distances is a mile and three sixteenths he's an English horse and they're bred on turf and this is a turf race so bet your money mark of distinction and Scott Davis showing his skills here this afternoon with another strike this one in the eighth Maintaining a 12-pin lead, but Billy Hall has 142 through 7, 8th frame now. This is where the matches really begin on a professional bowlers tour. Right now, Deaver's going at a 214 pace, Hall at a 202 pace. A lot of room to change around. Now leaving the 6, 7, 10. It actually got a bad break when the 9-pin fell out. It's much easier split to convert with that 6-7-9-10 up there than the 6-7-10. He cuts right through the middle, and he really has to go for it. A little split-making right here would put some pressure back on Devers. Got to go across lane and slide that 6 into the 7. Back-to-back so -back open frames for Marion, Ohio's Billy Hall. Disastrous at this point, trailing by 23. Meanwhile, Joe Salvemini and David Traver continue to stay loose, warming up for their matches coming up. It's perform time for Billy Hall. Must throw some strikes to win this match, ninth frame.
Well, Johnny Petrago, I think you picked out uh, a little flaw in Hall, Hall's game when he came out of the commercial. He was soft and went high. All his mistakes have been too slow. What mistakes would Devers make in this situation? He's experiencing as a 23-pin lead. I think the mistake that Devers might make here is get a little quick and leave it wide because he did that a few times last night on crucial shots. No mistakes today, Bo. Well, solid in the pocket, the seven pin, and uh, as we've seen, he's had no problem converting this. And right now, the, the job for Devers is to get good counts. He needs to make marks and get good counts to lock up the match as he leaves the solid seven. Quickly up, no problem with the spare. Now, for Devers, his situation is simply this. He needs to fill 18 pins in the 10th frame. That would be a strike and eight, or a nine spare nine, or any combination of that would put him at 212 or better, and he would lock out Billy Hall. Billy Hall, looking at the scoreboard, knows that the best he can do is 211. It's still not over. So open. The camera style of the left-handers. I have never seen this before. Thank you, Woody Fryman. And a good style view of Scott Devers locking up the match. He only needs eight pins on two balls. You saw that swing nice and close to his body, that right foot sliding within three inches of the foul line. And a new view for the left-handed viewers. Devers just needs eight pins on two shots. All right. Well, Bo's tip of the week is about the difference between bowling left-handed and right-handed. And what better men to have with him than Mark Roth and Johnny Petraglia.